Oh, okay. Well, that, it doesn't matter where they live. They can be living in, in Africa, or, you know, all around the world. Okay. But the thing is, they grew up in the area where the, you, you, grew up in the area where the midwife was. Mm -hmm. See? So you are going to be telling them the story. It doesn't matter where they live. Okay. And that's why they can email to me their essay. Okay. And then I will submit it to the essay committee. Okay. Okay? They can live anywhere. Okay. In other words, they just have to be elementary, middle school, or high school children. Okay. Okay. And so I want you to think about it now, Mrs. Lord, because I know you know some folks and you can get that information to them. Okay. Okay? So you about ready for this interview? I think I'm ready. All right. When you get ready, let us know. Ready whenever you are. Okay. Hello. Hello. I'm Dr. Janice K. Neal Vincent oral historian for Scott Ford House Incorporated and W.K. Kellogg team. Dr. Afertine Harrison is the executive director of this project. It's Friday, July 30th, 2021. I'm accommodated in this video recording by Mr. O'Shawn Brewer. I have a series of questions pertaining to a Mississippi granny midwife in the Delta region. And at this time, I would like for you to please state your name. Rosa Lee Lloyd. Rosa Lee Lloyd. May I have permission to interview you? Yes, you have. Thank you. What was the time period when you knew of a granny midwife who worked with you and or your relatives? Back the time period when I was a young child, my aunt was a, a midwife. I didn't have any dealing with her because I was in school then. Mm -hmm. But in the 50s, when I started having children, that's when I worked with the midwife. Okay, in the 50s. Uh-huh. Mm So in what community and or county did you and the midwife live? In Washington County. Okay, Washington at, County. Yeah, at that time. Mm -hmm. My aunt, we lived in uh, Claven County. Okay, that was before the 50s. That was before the 50s when I was a child. Okay. So now, where is Claiborne County? Is that near here? That's uh, down by Alcone College. Okay, okay. I think the birth certificate said Jefferson, but they write in that together, the two counties. Okay. What was the community and or county like there, here in Washington County? What, what were they like? Were there... For instance, race relations, and if so, what were they like? Well, I really wasn't out there because I had children so fast mm -hmm. until I didn't have time to, you know, to mingle with that kind of stuff until later on after I had children. Okay. So this was during the 50s? During the 50s. Time. Okay. So, 
after the 50s, as the children were coming, what do you recall about the race relations? Well, I was a young lady when Emmett Till uh, doing that brood murder. Mm -hmm. And when the people from the north came down to help out the south and the, uh, down in south Mississippi, they had took the voodoos and buried the, the bodies of the people, that three of them that came down to help. The three civil rights. Right, the three civil two rights. Two and the black. Okay. Right. Okay. Tell me about that. Can you recall what those relations were like in reference to these two murders, Emmett Till and the three civil rights workers? For instance, was the Washington community where you and the Granny midwife were during the 50s composed of all blacks? Was it mixed? Were there whites on one side? Were there blacks on the other side? What was that like? It was uh, whites on one side and black on the other side. Okay. And I can mostly remember the granny midwife that was my aunt. She had moved here then. Okay. And uh, she was out getting the people to go out to vote. The granny midwife? Uh-huh. Okay. What was her name? Mary Lightfoot. Mary Lee Lightfoot. Mm -hmm. The community here in Washington County. Yes. Okay, getting people to vote. Right. Did she have any problems with that? She never discussed it with me. Okay, because you were a child. I was grown then. You were grown she, then uh -huh, with but your she, children. Right, but okay. she never discussed that with me. Okay. So, did Mary Lee Lightfoot catch babies here in the community? Yes, she did. And in the family? Uh, not in the family. Not in the family. Not in the family. Okay. About how many babies did she catch overall? I don't know. Never asked her. Okay. But Lena Collins was the midwife that attended me and my family, my children. Okay. Lena? Lena Collins. Okay. We call her mother Lena Collins. Okay. So she caught all your babies? No, she caught four of them. Okay. Well, what was the relationship like with Lena Collins within the, within the family and the community? She was a loving lady. She was an old Indian -like looking lady mm -hmm. with gray hair at that time. Mm -hmm. And she was a loving, she was a loving person. Okay. She was a loving person. Uh huh. This was Lena Collins. Lena Collins. What made her loving? Can you give some examples? She just took so much time with her, you know, her patients. Okay. Did she spend the night with you? If she had to. Okay.
talking about the children. Your children with her. Well, the children didn't have any reaction with her because after this she was, you know, gone on delivering more babies. Okay. She was a seven aged lady then mm -hmm. because all her hair was white when she delivered my first baby. Okay. Do you have a picture of her? No, I don't have a picture don't of her. Don't have a picture. Uh -huh. okay. Can you remember? about how long she was a midwife, about how many years she was a midwife? She had been a midwife since she was a young lady. Uh, I had really intended to go to the health department mm -hmm. and get how long she did this, and I probably can still do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But uh, she was the known midwife here. Okay. And she lived, delivered most of the babies because at that time, it was uh, $25 to deliver a baby, mm -hmm. and uh, she delivered most of the baby. Okay. She was, I said, a certified one. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you suppose you can still go to the health department? I think I can. Seek that information? I, I think I can. Okay. That would be nice if you could do that. I, I think I can, and if I can't do it, I got a friend that worked there. I could get her to get it Look for into me, I think. Okay, thank you. And so, we'll be communicating about that. Okay. And I think you said she caught babies beyond the family members, which made her well known. Well known in the community. Okay. There were other midwives, but everybody just about went to Mother Cotton. Okay. You know about how many years she practiced midwifery? No, I don't. Okay. But I'll try to get all that information. Okay. Thank you so much. And it sounds like Mother Collins, I mean, to have that reputation of a name was well thought of. She was. Okay. She was. Did she catch both black and white babies? She did. She did. Uh -huh. Okay. And I think you were saying there was a black side and a white side. Mm -hmm. So how was she catching the white babies? I really don't know, but I know she did get it. Okay, okay, okay. Why did she catch babies outside of the medical clinics and or hospitals? It was cheaper then to do it at home. Okay. Was she refused opportunities to catch babies in the medical clinics and or hospitals? I don't know. Okay. Did racism interfere with the midwife catching babies? No. Did she talk about medical doctors or nurses who might have discriminated against her? No, she'd only discuss that if you needed a, if she couldn't deliver it, then she would have to have, you know, a doctor if she couldn't deliver it. Okay. Did the medical doctors prevent mothers from having children at hospitals? No, because Dr. St. Hill, my, of the one, the child that he delivered, he uh, begged me to let him deliver the baby because 
I really prefer the midwife to the doctor. Mm -hmm. By me being so short, they would put me in the stirrups, mm -hmm. and I didn't like to be in the stirrups, so I preferred the midwife. Okay. So it was Dr. Sandhill, Sand Hill. who was putting you in the skirt, in the skirt with you being so short. Yeah. Okay. All right. S A N D H I L L. Sand Hill. S T H I L L S. Okay. Spell it again. S T H I L L S. I think that's Okay. S T H I L L S. Uh huh. Oh. Okay. All right. Thank you. He was a doctor off the island. Okay, okay. Unique name. Uh huh. See here, okay. What island? Mm -hmm. You don't know, some island. Yes, yeah, some island. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think you said the midwife had a certificate. Does she have a certificate? No. Oh, uh, you mean, uh, to be oh, a midwife? Right, yes. I'm sure she did. Okay. Was she certified by the county, Washington County? I most know she was. Okay. But that's the information that I'm going to look up in. Okay. That would make it, as I make it look good. Okay. All right. We appreciate it. How was the midwife compensated for catching babies? How? Yes, how was she compensated? The family, I had to pay for that, which was $25 at that time. Okay. Per baby. Per baby. Okay. Do you know if she received any other kind of compensation? I don't. Okay. Was she forced into retirement? Seemingly, I, I don't know this, but seemingly she was. Now, I don't know whether it was her eight. Something came up with the midwife, but I. I don't know exactly what it was, but in the later years, something came up with the midwives, and they, you know, kind of busted up. Okay. It was three or four midwives here. Okay. And something came up. Now, I would have to get that, too. Okay. Okay. Do you think it may have been contributing to the physicians and race? I think, well, see... In the later years, uh, we got better jobs. Okay. And the physicians could get uh, money from the insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's why Dr. St. Hill delivered my baby because uh, he insisted that I let him deliver it because he knew that that time the company would pay on the deliverance of the baby. Oh, okay. So it was an economic thing. Right. Mm -hmm. And at that time, they had built a big hospital here. What, in the beginning, when I first started having babies, they only had a small hospital. Mm -hmm. But they had a built Delta Medical Center here. Okay, which was the big was hospital. the big hospital. Okay. So they had, what, three, maybe four black doctors. Okay. And the black doctors catered to delivering the black babies. Okay. Doctor Saint Hill delivered one, and Doctor Susan delivered one of my babies. Okay. And they were all black. They were black. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you said they delivered how many of yours? Two. Three? Two. Two. 
Okay. Four of them were delivered by midwife. Okay. By a mother Lena. Okay. Oh, these are the ones who were not. Okay, yes, right. I have it now. Thank you. What were the family relations like with the midwife? Did you say they called her mama? Lena. Yeah, Lena. Uh -huh. Mother Lena. Mother Lena. Mother Lena. So, what were those relations like? <clears throat> well, we didn't see her until we needed her. And in the late, uh, our late March, she would start keeping in touch with us and visiting us in the later months okay. of our pregnancy. Okay. And what were those visits like? She would just come and see how we were doing and talk to us and... For uh, six weeks after the baby was born, she would always come every week and see how we were doing. Okay. And so after that six-week period, and she saw that things were well uh -huh. within the family, did she move on? She'd move on. Okay, okay. Do you recall any contributions she made within the family and or community beyond catching babies? No. You don't recall any? Mm -hmm. How many babies did she catch in the family? You I said just four. remember. I just remember my four. Okay, can you give me that name? Sure. Okay. Mabel. Mabel. Mm -hmm. Kathy. Is that C A T H Y? Okay. I, uh, either one. Okay. Kathy. Uh huh. Uh, Leon. Leon. Uh huh. Okay. And Cheryl. Cheryl. C A T R Y L. Oh, yeah. Okay, very good. Do they live around here? Have they moved away? Or? Leon did. Kathy live here. That's Lawrence out there. Okay. No, Lawrence, no, she didn't deliver Lawrence. Dr. Okay. Susan did. Okay. Uh, but, yeah, Mabel works in Jackson for uh, at the White House. Okay. Okay. Very good. Did she have any assistance during the birthing process? No. She did everything by herself? She did everything by herself. Okay. Including, I can't understand it until today, excuse me. She would sit up and be wiping and I, I just couldn't stand it. <laughs> That's the only thing I hated about the home birthing. She would be eating and, you know, Taking care of you. Oh, okay, okay. You didn't like that. I didn't like that. Okay, okay. That's the only thing, but other than that... You thought she was okay? She was sweet. So she had to stay some time to start eating. She agreed. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> She's greedy. <laughs> Do you have a story about a black doctor in the community during the time period of the midwife? You said something about several black doctors? Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you recall anything or did anybody tell you anything about them? No. Okay. But you know they were present? Yeah. But she was always able to deliver mine, so I didn't have to. Okay. Did the midwife spend time with any children she caught? Not as I know of. Okay. 
What about that six-week period? She uh, would come back for the six weeks to make sure that everything was. And after the sixth week, we would have to go to the health department. Okay, okay. And we were released from her then after we would go to the health department. Okay. In terms of the children being weaned from her after the six-week period, did the children interact with her in any kind of way? No. Within those six weeks? Okay, no. You mean after the six weeks? No, I mean within, because after the six weeks she was gone. Right. Like I said. Uh -huh. So when she would come to check on you and the children, mm -hmm. you and the babies, within that six week time period that she was to come. Do you remember seeing her interact with them or was she only interacting with you? She would uh, pick the baby up and, you know, check the baby and see if the baby were gaining weight or whatever mm -hmm. was necessary for the baby. Okay. Can you provide names and contact information of children who interacted with the midwife? I guess these would be the children's name you gave me. Would they be your children? Yeah, they're my children. Okay. Let's see that number here. Did she talk about medical doctors or nurses who discriminated against her? No, she did. Okay. Did medical doctors prevent mothers from having children at the hospitals? Not as I know of. Was a midwife the community doctor or leader? Was she active in the community and or the church? I don't know that either. Okay. What stands out most in your mind about the midwife? <laughs> Her evening wife. Okay. <laughs> There are other granny midwives. I think you did say that there were some other yeah, that was midwives. A... And what were their names? Mm, I have to get their names. Beyond Lena Collins, you uh -huh. said Lena Collins was your midwife. Uh -huh. And I think you had two other names. Mary Lightfoot and Mary that Lightfoot was your uh -huh. aunt. Uh -huh. Okay. And uh I'll send you those names. I don't want to give you the wrong name. Okay. Okay. Mary Lightfoot. Well, were there other granny midwives serving in the community when Mother Lena Collins yes. was serving? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. And what were their names? That's what I, I have you to get. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay.
Did males play a role during the birthing process? Not with me, because I wasn't there. Okay. Did, with the midwife coming to you, did she get herself here by herself? Did someone drive her to you where you were? Did, how, how was that? Did she travel by a wagon? Did she travel by a horse? How, did she come alone? She would come alone. Okay. Uh, at that time, they walked most of the places that they went. Okay, okay. And she lived on Sunflower Lane and we, I was over near the levee on Poplar Street, so mm -hmm. it wasn't too far. Okay. were blacks connected to cotton within the community? Cotton played in this area very, as you know, important role throughout the country and the world. We would pick cotton. Okay. Uh, so much a hundred. Okay. Tell me about that. Uh, when we started picking cotton in September, and through October, we would go to the field mm -hmm. and uh, pick that. You started picking it in September? September. And then? Through October. Okay. Yeah, the last of October. It okay. was, when it get cold, we would be just about finished picking. Okay. But we didn't have the machines that picked it up then. We would do it. Okay. Okay, so after October, what happened? Uh, we didn't pick anymore because it had got cold. Okay. Okay. And really, that was the mean of uh, most of our income was chopping and picking cotton. Okay. Especially here in the Delta. Did you encounter hardship at any time mm -hmm. with that? It was a hardship because it wasn't too much money involved in it. Mm -hmm. And with all the babies I had, you know, it wasn't no easy going then. Mm -hmm. Was there, where you were, a sharecropping situation going on? No. We were just, uh, they had trucks. Uh, people would haul people to the field. Mm -hmm. And uh, they would get so much, you know, for everybody that they carried. Mm -hmm. Well, who mostly benefited? The person that kept, the, the, a person that owned the field mostly mm -hmm. benefited. And the next person that it, uh, benefited good was the person that had the truck. And see, 20 or 25 of us was on that back of that truck mm -hmm. that he would take to the field. 20 or 25? Uh, maybe more. Okay. Was that a black person or a white person? That was a black person. The one who had the truck? Right. Okay. So these... 20 or 25 persons, did he take at one time to yeah. the Yeah, uh-huh. Okay. 
and he would have to stay there all day and help see to the way up, keep your weight, and mm -hmm. so in the evening time they could pay you off. So how often did you go to the field? Sometimes I would go five days a week until I, you know, got other income. Mm -hmm. Was it difficult to work in the fields? Well, I had did that all my life because as a, from six years old, years old on, I can remember being in the field. Okay. From six years. Mm -hmm. What were you doing when you were six? Between water six girl, and ten. Water girl. <laughs> okay. You were a water girl uh -huh. at age six. Right. And how long were you a water girl? Probably about three years. Until I, you know, got big enough to chop the cotton or pick the cotton. Around 10? Uh-huh. And how long did you do that? From 10 on to what years? Oh. Uh, well, I uh, picked cotton after I got here in the Delta, which was in the 50s. Mm-hmm. But, uh, from a child, from 6 years on until I left the hills, which I was 17 or maybe 18 when I came to the Yeah, death. when you, okay. You were 17 or 18 when you stopped picking cotton? No, uh, -uh. Oh. I picked cotton after I was 18, 17 or 18. I picked cotton after I came here. Mm -hmm. So, you picked cotton from ages 17 to, I'd say, 22 or 23, because okay. I started working in factories after that. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you said earlier that the owner of the land, mm -hmm. the cotton field itself, benefited the most. Was the person that owned it, which was the white man. Okay. So, and especially in the Delta. Okay. So how did he benefit? Well, I mean, how, he, how really did he benefit? He had planted, this was his land, and... This was his field. Mm -hmm. So he had hired this man to bring labor to his field. Mm -hmm. And uh, he benefits from us, you know, gathering his, harvesting his crops, uh, chopping his cotton up, okay. whatever it was that he had planted. What did he do with the cotton? Do you know? Yeah, they would uh, send it to the gin. And they would bail it up and send it to uh, make material and stuff out of it to a factory. So, with that type of production based on your labor and the other cotton pickers labor then he went where with it from the factories to where did he did he go from Mississippi did he cover Mississippi well the Delta 
But did he move from the Delta throughout Mississippi with the cotton productivity? Did he go around the country? What happened after all of that with the, the cotton? I don't know. I know they would send it off and, you know, the uh, material and stuff was made from it. Okay. Material was made from it. From the cotton. Okay. All right. I have that in here. Okay. Well, we have come to my final question, I believe, about the artifacts for you to donate. You have donated a certificate mm -hmm. bearing the granny midwife's name, and we really do appreciate that. Are there any other items that you might be able to donate to the center? No. Like the bedpans or the clothing that maybe mother had on the midwife or her cap or her black bag that he, she kept her utensils and things in, herbs. Did she have herbs? Did she use herbs? Oh my goodness. I'm sorry. It still works. It still works? Yes, okay. ma'am. I caught it a little bit. <laughs> oh, well, very good. I'm glad you caught it. Do, do you have any other items? No, no. Pictures, you say you don't have a picture. No. Out. No picture. Out. No, my house burned down during the ice storm. Oh, oh okay, okay, okay. Mm, that was very unfortunate. It was. Mm -mm Do you have any questions you'd like to ask me before we close out and, and take a nice photo together? You don't think so? Well, Scott Ford House Incorporated, W.K. Kellogg team and I are just so grateful that you have invited us here to your lovely home and you have welcomed us and you have pointed out that for some of the items, the very few items that you do not have enough information about, you will see through the health department. Right. And we really do thank you for that opportunity. Plus, remember I said that once I transcribe this interview by tomorrow, then I shall send you a copy. Okay. Then you will look at the copy and see if there's anything within the, the information provided that you would like to delete or add. <clears throat> and so more than likely next week at some point I'm surmising that you would have communicated some kind of way through your friend you spoke about or yourself with the health department and uh, we can move forward from there okay. with that information that you would provide okay. if any. Okay? All right. And I thank you so much. Uh, this is right. really nice, Mrs. Lord. It's a very you. good interview. Thank you. Mm -hmm.